Welcome back to Mozzie Sales. Another really tricky couple of races, and it's becoming so apparent that, you know, in these light winds on narrow courses, it is almost impossible to get past up wind. I personally think Emirates Team New Zealand do have a good VMG advantage. However, it's just not enough to get around Luna Rossa, and Luna Rossa are picking off their fair share of the starts. So, we're coming out with a super even match but it's not making for the greatest of racing around the course so let's have a little chat about why that is and talk about uh, wing wash or disturbed air or dirty air and how it forms so the wing coming down hits the sails and is bent this means any boat sitting off behind is effectively sitting in a header but it gets worse because the flow on the windward side of the sails is slowed down and the flow on the leeward side is accelerated, when they get to the back end of the sail, there's quite a large pressure difference and this will start a kind of a turbulent eddy. This eddy is really hard to set your sails to. So even though you're sailing in a header, you'll have bits of wind as you hit that turbulent air coming from all different directions and make it very hard to trim a sail to. But it's not just the flow of air that's hitting the sails which is deflected. This kind of turning of the breeze permeates quite a far different distance, even slightly ahead of the yacht, obviously slightly behind it, but also either side. This creates quite a large block of air around the yacht sails which have been disturbed either by the flow changing direction, changes in pressure, or the turbulent eddies coming off the back end of the sail. So that covers how this disturbed air is created and what the effects of it are, but how long does it stick around for and where does it go? I like to think of this in time. Where will the yacht be that is creating the disturbed air be? Where will the wind have blown the disturbed air to? And where will the trailing yacht, which has experienced the wind wake, moved itself to all in time? And the final aspect, which is really time critical, is the decay of this turbulent air. Because it doesn't stay like that forever. The wind, the energy in this air is replenished from above in the air column and from the sides in the air column, where faster moving air picks up this eddy, straightens it out, and replenishes it with energy. However, because this is a sea breeze, this air movement doesn't extend up into the air column like you may think. And in fact, the air higher up might be moving in the complete opposite direction. This means it's not as readily replenished from above. And with yachts with super tall mass taking a lot of energy out of the wind, this is a real big issue. Add on to that, the cold air that the sea breeze is sucking in will be well stratified and not mixed, so it's unlikely to replenish from the sides either. This leads you to long lasting and persistent wind shadows. Now, normally on a windy day, the dirty air replenishes quicker, but on a light wind day, it takes longer. But the flip side of that is usually when it's light winds, the the air can be the breeze can be less stable and you get a little bit of thermal pockets from coming from different directions which gives you shifts and changes in wind pressure which allow a trailing boat to keep up but when the courses are so narrow and the breeze is so steady and the wind wake is so large and persistent it really makes it difficult for the boat behind to get ahead let's have a chat with rob now catch up on his thoughts after the first three days of the regatta. Rob, I've brought you back on for some opinions. We're um, midway through, I say midway through, I guess just under midway through if they go the full distance with this one apiece, but we're midway through and I brought you on to get some um, get some opinions, right or wrong, on, um, on what we can expect from here and kind of obviously it's not what you predicted, so a word on that why has it been why has it been so different well i think for, i should just do a public apology to the entire italian population because i've definitely been getting some flack from them on the comments um i mean i do stand by some of what i said in that team new zealand 
it does appear to be a faster boat in that when they get the lead, they sail off to massive victories. And when Luna Rossi get the lead, they they only have quite narrow margins of victories. Tim Zoon seem to be able to keep it close. But it's nowhere near enough difference that Tim Zoon can sail around them. And Luna Rossi being really disciplined in the way they're sailing the boat. So loads of credit to the, the crew on Luna Rossa. They're, they're using the tool they've got incredibly effectively. And I do feel like if we see 80 knots plus racing, Team New Zealand might show that speed edge. But looking at the forecast, it feels a bit unlikely that we're ever going to we're ever going to see these boats racing in that again, which is a bit of a shame. Like our, our lasting memory of the AC75 might potentially be them racing in eight knots with no shifts, no overtaking lanes in what is incredibly dull racing. Um, and I, th I think the other thing I said in fairness is I predicted Team New Zealand to win, but I predicted exciting racing with lots of overtakes. And if I'm honest, I'd have much rather watched that than what we're seeing at the minute, which is very tight scoreline and probably some of the dullest yacht racing I've ever had the pleasure of watching. <laughs> I mean, that's the I, thing I though, watched... isn't it? It's, it's the tightest America's Cup in terms of the match of the yachts I think we've almost ever had. And yet still people are complaining. And there's good reason for it though, because you know, if you're sitting down to watch a race for half an hour, you're really getting, you know, probably two minutes, 30 of action of kind of like this question. And that's what you're watching it for, that anticipation of who are winners or not. If that anticipation only lasts for two and a half minutes from two minutes before the pre-start to 30 <laughs> seconds after, then you kind of feel a bit short-changed. And yet, we still have no idea who's going to win this America's Cup. Like, no one could pick it from this point forward. It's been difficult. No, and it feels like it might be more exciting to just get um, Bruni and Spittle on one side of a table and Burling on the other, and they just flip a coin a couple more <laughs> times and see who wins the America's Cup that way. Like, there'd be more tension. And I watched the entire day's footage today in five minutes. <laughs> I watched the two pre-starts and then after the pre-start, I just quickly clicked through the race just to check there wasn't an overtake. I don't see how we'll get overtaking. So, I mean, one option would be to make the boat, like, for, for the next iteration, make the boats harder to sail so that the good teams, the good teams will effectively do more manoeuvres well than the bad teams and they'll sail off to quite large victories. But it also means that a good team could get behind because they happen to do a bad tack first, but then they're likely to overtake because they'll do fewer bad manoeuvres over the length of the race. So I think that would be an option. And then the other thing we've discussed is that if you have this format of racing where it's all about the start, well, the start needs to be longer than two minutes. It needs to be, a, it needs to be five minutes in the start box you need to be forcing the boats into doing lots of manoeuvres within the box. So someone can really have a chance to get the upper hand or force a mistake. And then the race should just be an up and a down. So make it a five minute start and a 10 minute race. That, that to me as a spectator would feel like a much better ratio in, in terms of watching the, cru the, the crucial action unfold and then seeing a little bit of a race afterwards. Yeah, I think longer starts would be good f for two reasons. First of all, it's the most interesting part of the race by far, so more of that the better. Um, actually, three reasons. Second reason, the longer the starts go on, the more manoeuvres you get, so the more permutations of how it might play out, which increases interest. And finally, I think it, it, the longer the pre-starts go on, the less it's down to chance. At the moment, it seems to be very much upon whether you've got a nice bit of breeze when you get to that boundary to come back in and what the breeze is like there. So the starboard boat can get an advantage, but it's mostly if things go wrong for the port entry, like they jibe or tack in some bad pressure <coughs> and a bit of that feels down to luck. But if the pre-start went on for longer, you know, those kind of like flip of the coin type um look of whether you get a good gust or a good um, or a bad lull to um, do a manoeuvre and that kind of evens out and we see a bit more of the proper skill come through. 
Yeah, I mean, I I know we saw the port entry win the first four races, but to me that was just complete coincidence because actually the port entry wasn't starting. It wasn't like they were always starting tight lured or wide right. They were. It was one or the other. So the other boat had the choice to effectively force the situation. And I think what we saw today is in the first race, it looked, and we talked about this yesterday, but Spittle, they, they've obviously gone away, done a bit of analysis of this port entry versus starboard entry. And they've realised that if, as the trailing boat, so the starboard entry, you can, you do, you kind of cross the returning boat and do your jibe down below them. So you end up in a more bows even situation. That just prevents the windward boat from even having the chance to put the bow down and for, uh, and push you down the line. Th their only option then becomes to try and reach over the front of you. And I think now that Luna Rossa have figured this out, gone out, done it, executed it effectively, to me, it, it's a bit of an indication that they might be fairly dominant now in that start. So th they've, they've kind of got a play for this now that to me looks effective. Team New Zealand are going to have to be really on the ball and go, OK, how do we defend against this play? And I think that's good in a way, because I think that's what's in what I find intriguing about a well, well balanced kind of strategy game is where, the, you know, for every move, there's a kind of an equal and opposite counter move. And then it just becomes who um, executes those strategies yeah. better in terms of the skill of the control of the boat and the speed they carry through the manoeuvres and the control of the speed. So I think I think that is good. And I do think the pre-starts are interesting. Like I'm genuinely interested. Those two minutes are as good a sailing or as interesting sailing as you'll ever see. It's slightly more confusing to an outsider to sailing in that like what? Why do you even care if you haven't even started the race yet? It's like watching yeah. a football match and they're all there just like doing up the laces in the tunnel and everyone's like, This is the best bit of the match. <laughs> like, it's like it's like that Irish commentary for the laser radial race at the yeah. London twenty twelve, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The, the counter is is counting down and the guy's going he's like, Oh, it's nearly down at zero. Who's gonna get to the line first? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think in in the old days of conventional match racing in heavy keel boats, these these cup teams all had teams doing the world match racing tour. They were doing have many events a year, racing the same guys, developing playbooks. Like all of those teams, like e even even far down the world rankings, teams had developed playbooks on what are the moves if. What's the counter move? When do you like? What are the factors that would determine that this is the play versus? Like, why would we use play A versus play B? That kind of thing. And obviously, these guys would have had a World Series, so they probably they probably only had a third of the amount of racing that they could have had at this point. Mm -hmm. So the the yeah. plays just won't be as developed. And, and I'm sure if we saw another iteration of this cup, the pre starts would. Well, would they be more exciting? They'd be they'd be more refined, and it would just come down to execution, and then the lead boat would sail off and win, and it'd be really boring. <laughs> I, I think um, I think the pre-starts will always be interesting. I think there'll always be this development of tactics, especially in the first few years of boats. I think we were a little bit, you know, the America's Cup has been impacted by COVID and the loss of those World Series events, where I think a lot of these kind of like the very basic kind of strategical options like people would have figured out and then as viewers when we we're watching the final we'd be able to recognize those patterns a little bit more whereas the viewer it's kind of like oh, are they doing something good or bad is this a set play or not you can't really tell so i think that would have been nice i also think it would have been an opportunity for the um for the race team to kind of get a bit more handle on exactly how big those start boxes would had to be how long the start sequence needed to be and you could have made some tweaks to the format i do think the course is when it's and when it's light winds the these boats are extracting so much energy from the wind and it's such a narrow column of wind they're working in and like you said they're crossing the course so quickly it, it is no surprise <clears throat> that the boat behind is being hammered so i do think in lighter winds especially I mean, sometimes in lighter winds, you'd expect it to be less stable and what you'd lose in the kind of advantage of the leading boat from the wind shadow, you'd gain back in a bit more of the, the randomness. 
unfortunately we have these really steady kind of like eight knot uh, weak sea breezes and I just think a bit of a wider course in this situation would be better not when it's windy I think it's fine because those wind shadows blow out from the course a little bit quicker um, and then when it's windy you probably like to see more handling maneuvers as well at the top end so maybe a bit more tacks and jibes and they bounce and boundaries a bit quicker um, but I do think like some of those kind of just subtleties to produce a well-balanced race we might have got if we'd had more of the World Series. Okay, thanks for watching. I am really hoping we get some racing on the stadium courses, a bit more disturbed air rather than these steady sea breezes. And um, yeah, fingers crossed for a bit more overtaking.